Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video, and in this one, I'm sharing with you guys five important steps for building an anti three star war base. Uh, these are the steps that I go through uh, when I'm building my war bases, and they can apply to Town Hall 9 and Town Hall 10. Um, this is the base we're using as an example. I'm going to be walking you guys through how um, I went about building this base and each of the steps um, that you guys can see. Uh, as the progression goes through and as the base slowly gets built. So I'm going to share with you guys the five steps now and then we'll take a look at this base as an example and how it was built. Uh, if you are a Town Hall 10, be sure to stick around because these exact same concepts apply to Town Hall 10 as well. The only difference is you have a few Inferno Towers, a few extra defenses, but the exact same steps can be used for Town Hall 10 as well. This is an overall anti three star uh, step step-by-step -step guide. So the first step is going to be building that important core of your base, the important stuff, which is going to be the Inferno Towers, the Expos at Town Hall 10, and the Air Defenses plus the Queen um, at Town Hall 9 Just subtract the Infernos pretty much. Getting the important core down, the stuff that really defines the base, this is a concept you should have in mind before you even start building. Then go ahead and fill in all the walls of the base to get an idea of what it's going to look like um, and see about the size of your base and you can get an idea of where you can start putting defenses once all the walls are down. So then you fill in the defenses and you fill in those high HP buildings like storages in the town hall. Those can be adjusted, the walls can be adjusted um, based on how the uh, buildings are lining up and stuff like that. Then you put the traps in around them. Uh, so once the defenses are down, th start to fill in the traps, including the Teslas, um, giant bombs, spring traps, all that kind of stuff, plus your air traps. Then finally you fill in the trash buildings. So those are my steps, there's five of them. Um, I'm gonna walk you guys through those five steps in this specific base, and after this video, you should be able to apply those steps to any base you wanna build, Town Hall 9 or Town Hall 10. So let's get started here. So here is the first step shown on this Town Hall 9 base. You can see the overall concept I have done, uh, pretty much the core of the base, that's typically what it's gonna include. I have the two wizard towers uh, in the middle, then the CC, and these semi-expo islands around them. Not a full expo island, but uh, they're pretty protected from bowlers and wizards um, and stuff like that that typically can shoot over walls. Um, I have the queen off to one side, closest to the CC. So this is the first thing you wanna do, the overall idea what the middle of the base is gonna look like. Um, you should have an idea before you even start building the base what the core is gonna look like, what the overall design is gonna be, um, because the rest of the base revolves around this initial uh, design. So you can see we have the important buildings like the queen, the CC, the expos, and the air defenses down, plus two wizard towers, which are gonna be central to the idea of the base. Um, so now that I have all that down, I can continue with the next steps. Now I've completed step two here, which is just filling in the walls around those essential uh, core components. So all the walls are down. Keep in mind, this is not set in stone. It's difficult to you know predict exactly where the walls are gonna be, um, and you're gonna change them a lot based on the defenses you put down, because you might put down an archer tower, then say, okay, I wanna make sure that cannot be sniped by the queen on a queen walk, and then in that case, you'd adjust walls accordingly. Um, it's okay to have a few extra walls as well, but the important thing is just that you can see um, about the size of your base, what it's going to look like, get the overall layout down um, because it makes it more efficient building your base to have an idea of where things can go and what your limitations are because if you just start putting defenses down, um, you, you're kind of not seeing the whole picture as much as you do if you get all the walls down after those essential components. So that's what I've done. I filled in the walls as best I could in what I think the base is going to look like and now that that's done, I can start to fill in some more buildings. Okay, now step three might be the biggest leap here. Um, it is filling in the defenses, and then also part of that is making adjustments uh, to kind of some of the previously laid out defenses. So when you start off with your core design, that's kind of the, what your base is. Um, it's really the heart, the soul, the defining features of your base is that first step, getting the first um, important buildings down. But those can be adjusted. <clears throat> As you can see with the air defenses, what I did is I went ahead and staggered them. That way um, I prevented a golem and wizards from just taking out two point defense. I put a cannon back where the air, uh, air defense was. Uh, wizards can't reach it, makes it harder to uh, 
to create like a nice funnel there and to get too much value uh, before the entry into the base with the kill squad. So those are the kind of adjustments you can make. Um, even the core part of the base, the essentials that you put down can still be adjusted. But um, this is just using all the techniques you guys have seen um, on my channel about how to um, do different things in your base, how to defend against queen walks, how to defend against hogs. Um, check out my um, recent uh, and even not so recent videos on different base building techniques. There's all kinds of playlists on my channel. I'm not gonna go into that too much in this video, but the idea in this step is just to follow those concepts and to fill in both defenses um, and storages. The storages are important um, because you want to separate your uh, defenses with the storages. You want to put them where they can hold up a queen walk, where they can make a funnel difficult. Um, just kind of weave them into your base. Um, you don't want to make it so your base is just defenses. You want to get some HP in there to, uh, to try to mess up some attacks, especially at Town Hall 10. Uh, Town Hall 9, not as important, but still um, it's a good thing to have those high HP buildings. So that's what I've done. Um, I'm not going to go through the details too much, but I filled in uh, what I want to have in this base, and I've made a few adjustments. Uh, I didn't adjust the walls, but you certainly can adjust the walls, especially if you're going to really take time on the base, make it as best you can. Um, you can adjust those walls and uh, make it just a little bit more difficult for entries, for queen walks, uh, for all that good stuff. So. That is the uh, step complete here. This is step three, which is the defenses, the storages, and uh, adjusting what's previously been put down to accommodate uh, those new additions to your base. So the next step was uh, filling in the traps and uh, Teslas, all that kind of stuff. Um, some people like filling in their Teslas earlier on, um, but at Town Hall 9 and even Town Hall 10, I like to wait more towards the end, um, see how my base is set up and use the Teslas uh, based on that, where I need them, where some of the weaknesses might be. And then I fill in the giant bombs, the spring traps, and then all the air traps, um, the small bombs. And I even like to hold on to a few of the mortars and use them later on when I put down my traps to uh, to draw golems in different directions and to kind of serve as more of a of a trap almost than a defense. So I, I held on to two of my mortars. You guys might have noticed in the last step I only had put two of them down inside the base. The ones on the outside of the base I like to hold on to a little bit longer, uh, which I think makes some intuitive sense. So uh, taking a look at you know what I did, I decided to have pretty much core giant bombs here. People oftentimes like putting them towards the outside with a surprise Tesla farm. Your choice. This isn't the best Town Hall 9 base. It's a version. You guys are, you know, welcome to use it if you want. I'm not a Town Hall 9 myself, but this is, uh, I think, a pretty solid base. Um, the spring traps put them more towards the outside. Again, these are details I'm not going to go into too much depth on um, because this is more about the overall process of building a base. Um, but of course, you can adjust buildings just like in all the previous steps. Um, once you put something down, it's still subject to being adjusted all the way until you're using the base in war. You can still change it after friendly challenges. Um, so keep in mind, it's a very uh, dynamic process. I moved a few of the storages to accommodate Teslas, uh, like right here. I'm a big fan of having the mortar, Tesla, spring trap in between, both at Town Hall 9 and Town Hall 10, because it, you know, it springs off a few hogs where uh, the attacker's not expecting it. So um, I, I did not use a Tesla farm in this base, but it is very common at Town Hall 9, so you could easily put a Tesla farm at some place in this base. Um, but pretty much standard traps. I went ahead and put the uh, red air bombs in the middle to kind of amplify the wizard tower splash damage uh, because there's no air defenses and there's likely going to be some loons going through there in an air attack. Uh, have the seeking air mines out on the air defenses, pretty standard, small bombs around the outside to kill wall breakers. So that's basically the step, putting the traps down uh, according to how your base is set up, decide if you want the skellies on air or ground. This allows you to kind of make up for maybe some deficiencies in certain parts of your base. You might notice you're not, you don't have great air defense set up or something, so you can put your skellies on air to compensate. You can you know, adjust which way your air sweepers are pointing. Um, still making adjustments, but by now your base should be um, relatively 
uh, you know, well designed and you should have most of the concepts down. The core of the base should be done. You don't want to make any big adjustments here, but make the small adjustments to give your base um, advantages to kind of tone it up where it might be a little bit weak. And then um, after this step is the uh, final step, which is putting down the trash buildings. I'm not even going to do that, but um, a few things to keep in mind when you're putting down trash buildings are you want to have locations where there might be Tesla, so kind of keep them uh, a little bit away from your base. Have some possible Tesla farm locations, both at Town Hall 9 and Town Hall 10. Can really throw off the first attacker, um, especially at Town Hall 9 when there's no scouts or anything. Um, so those are good techniques. And also just kind of keep them evenly spaced. You want to have your high HP buildings close to your defenses. That way they can't be sniped with a few minions or archers uh, at the beginning of the attack. So those are the basics of building a base. Hope this video helped. Like I said, apply these um, concepts to any town hall level, but those are the steps. You start with the uh, core of your base, the important buildings, the important walls, um, going to be the overall defining setup of your base, then fill in the rest of the walls, fill in the defenses and storages while making adjustments, of course, then fill in the traps and finally the trash building. So that's my process. If you guys have different ideas, please let them uh, drop them in the comments below so other people can see different uh, approaches to this. But this is what I think is one of the better approaches. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later. Bisectatron out.